Hello, and welcome to another episode of A Spoonful of Species, your go-to place for conservation through baking. My name is Caitlin, and I'm an interpretive naturalist with years of experience telling the stories of animals, both aquatic and terrestrial. I'm also an avid baker, and each week I bake an animal-themed dessert and discuss the stories of that animal, as well as any conservation initiatives there are for it, and how you can help right from home. This week, I went a little off the beaten path, and I made fudge. Now fudge is a delicious, creamy, gooey dessert, and I love it so much, and I made it into poop. That's right, poop. Now, you might be asking yourself, why would she do that? And one, it was really fun. And two, uh, because poop is an extremely important part of our natural world. And I'm gonna let you know about it today. Now, before anyone gets excited, just so you know, there's no poop used in my video today uh, that is real, only edible, and by edible, I mean fudge. And if you're like me and you love scat or the talk of poop, then keep watching this video. Otherwise, it might be best to turn your eyes away now. Now, I will not be using any of the slang terms for poop here today uh, on A Spoonful of Species because this is science. Instead, you'll hear me using words like droppings, dung, scat, manure, feces, fecal matter, stool, guano, dung, dropping, oh, and yes, poo. To make your fudge, you will need four cups of chocolate. I split mine between dark and semi-sweet chocolate. 28 ounces of sweetened condensed milk, which should be two cans, one teaspoon of sea salt, two teaspoons of vanilla, and if you want anything in there, two cups of walnuts or coconuts. To make your fudge, line a baking dish with parchment paper. Add all of your ingredients, except for the vanilla, in a saucepan and mix on a low heat until the mixture becomes smooth. Mix in your vanilla, and when the mixture is thickened and becomes shiny, pour it into your prepared pans. This would be also a when you would add the coconut or almonds if you'd like. Let cool and then shape it into dough. The first animals whose droppings I'd like to talk about might be pretty familiar to you. So the first animal is bunny poo. So bunny rabbits actually have really interesting poo, which is funny because we've probably all seen a bunny. Uh, go number two. And these bunny rabbits actually have really small circular poops and uh, these droppings are small and circular because of the way that the rabbit's digestive tract works. It helps make it that shape and that size and as they uh, continually digest their food there's not a lot left over so their poops are usually pretty small. The average bunny will poop 200 to 300 little droppings every day. These fecal pellets are made up of the fibrous material in their diets, but they also have another kind of poop. This fecal matter are called cecotropes, and these cecotropes are extremely important to bunny rabbits, and in fact, bunny rabbits couldn't live without them. And they do something really gross with them, and I bet you can guess what it is. That's right, they eat it. So they eat these cecotropes, um, which are producing their cecum, which helps break down the hard matter, and they're coated in like slime with really good gut bacteria and lots of nutrients that they need, and they have to eat them. Now technically, eating a poop is called coprophagia, which is a really fun word for me, but coprophagia, it just means, if you hear it the rest of the video, something's eating poop. So yes, many animals in the animal kingdom actually exhibit coprophagia, the eating of poop, because uh, of a few reasons. One, they might eat it because there might be nutrients or bacteria that they need in their diet that they can't get elsewhere, or two, to maybe uh, tell something about another animal of their species, or to hide themselves from predators. Another animal that's famous for eating poop are dung beetles. Dung beetles are also known as scarabs because they were used in art and jewelry from the ancient Egyptians to kind of represent um, their rising sun god. And the dung beetle or the scarab is really cool because there are three different kinds. One that rolls the poop into a ball, like the one uh, that you see in this picture. One that um, lives inside of the poop, so they're burrowers. And one that lives like, on top or around the poop. So, these dung beetles, they will lay their eggs inside of poop, they will eat the poop, they will live in the poop, they literally love poop. 
And if I had to find a human equivalent, I would think of myself, man, I would really like to live in House of Cheese. It'd be delicious. But we don't do that because it would also be kind of gross. So dung beetles are awesome animals. They can uh, push poop. That's over 50 times their weight, which is incredible. Their feet of strength is amazing and you should like them just as much as I do. This next animal you maybe might not have heard of before. These brown marsupials are called wombats and they are related to the kangaroo or the koala. They have those little belly pouches where they keep their babies and wombats are really interesting animals but they also have some of the most interesting poop in the world and that's because their poop is cube shaped. Their poop is not circular or round like every other poop in the whole world. They're cube shaped, which is like squared, and they're the only animal who has a poop that's shaped this way. And scientists did a lot of digging and they think that they have this cube shaped poop because they want to be able to, one, stack their poop up really tall as an impressive display, um, just like sometimes we stack our Legos really high as an impressive display uh, or as a good game. So they stack their, their Legos, their poop really high as an impressive display and also to attract other wombats to the area without the poop rolling away. So who knew? Square poop. Elephants also have extremely interesting poops. Elephants are herbivores and they only digest about 45% of their foodstuffs every day, and so the rest of that comes back out in their feces. And elephants can poop about 300 pounds every single day, which is an incredible amount of poop. They also have extremely large poops, so my fudge poop that represents their poop uh, is not to scale. Because their poop is so fibrous, it's actually extremely good for the ecosystems in which they live and acts as a fertilizer, and some farmers use it as fertilizers for their plants. You can also make poop paper out of their poop because it's so fibrous uh, and so full of nutrients, so you can squish it together uh, and make elephant poop paper. So this is my cute little book of elephant poop paper. Rhino poo, much like elephant poo, is also extremely fibrous, uh, although they do digest more of their food than, say, the elephants do. Um, and their poop is always in one big pile together. They all poop in the same place, and it's called a dung midden. This dung midden is kind of like social networking for people. So they can go to this dung midden, and by sniffing each other's poop, they can see uh, who's been there, how long ago they were there. They can determine the sex the age, um, the reproductive status of the rhinos nearby. And by doing so, they're kind of also advertising themselves to other rhinos, like I am ready to maybe have a baby, or they might be saying like, this is kind of my area, back off. So it's really interesting and really cool. And uh, the next time you use Facebook, you can think of it as uh, you're using a rhino's dung midden. Blue whales are not only the largest animal in the world at over 100 feet long and can be over 300,000 pounds, but they also have the world's largest poops. Blue whales are incredible animals and they eat some of the smallest animals, the krill, and so their poop is actually usually pretty red. I did not have red fudge, so you'll just have to imagine it a slightly redder tinge, but blue whales, uh, their defecation, their poop, can be over 52 gallons, which if you weighed it out would be well over 400 pounds, making it the largest poop in the world. Their poop is also extremely important to the ecosystems around them. So not only do they poop, but that when they do, it's creating a fertilizer for the surface of the ocean. It's uh, creating food for the beginning of our food webs, those phytoplankton that create the oxygen that we breathe. So the next time you take a deep breath of air, you can thank some whale poop. Who is not just important for the animals in the natural world, but also for the scientists who study them. There is a fossilized poo called co coprolite, and this poop is really uh, awesome because you can tell the diet where animals were, what, were, what was alive then, what they ate, um, and even possibly their DNA structure from a fossilized bit of poop. So scientists are studying and have studied T. rex poo, 
and uh, Brontosaurus poo. And by studying these ancient fossilized poo, uh, they're able to learn a lot about the, what the natural world was like then, which helps us learn a lot about our natural world now. Scientists also study feces in order to tell a lot about the natural world today. So feces can be used to, be, to discover an animal's overall health, diet, uh, if they have any parasites or bacteria, their fertility, reproductive status, uh, reproductive cycles, or even if they're ready to give birth. And all of this information by studying animal feces uh, can also, in nature, tell us about an animal's territorial boundaries, where they've been, and even how many of them are in an area. So as you can see, poop is really important for you and me as well. Poop is also an incredibly important tool for conservationists and working with poo, actually finding conservation initiatives that work with poo was extremely simple. I thought it was gonna be a lot more difficult, but it turns out a lot of scientists are studying a lot of poop. So a couple of my favorite, number one was the uh, conservation canines, which is uh, based out of the University of Washington and they use canines, dogs, rescue dogs, to sniff out scat uh, in our oceans, so sniffing for whale poop, especially orca poop, and also uh, in the wilderness to be able to study their poop and study the animals that make the poop. Number two, um, the San Diego Institute for Conservation and Research, they study rhino poop there because they're trying to save uh, southern and northern white rhinos and also Indian rhinos. So by studying everybody's poop, they can track their hormone levels and how they're feeling and when they're ready for reproduction, which helps their species survival plans, which helps rhinos both at the safari park and zoo and also in the wild. So what can you do? One, you can go learn more about poop. It's incredibly fascinating, really interesting. And if you go to inaturalist.com and you uh, walk out into nature, take a picture of some poop, you can log it there and you're helping scientists study that poop. Two, you can pick up after your pets. Uh, leaving dog feces out in parks or in the wild or even in your neighborhood, uh, their poop has a lot of stuff in it that doesn't belong in nature. It can disrupt the ecosystems or the equilibrium of the ecosystems just by leaving your dog poop. So pick it up. Whatever you take in, pack back up. This has been another episode of A Spoonful of Species. My name is Caitlin. I hope you like this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. Uh, come back and see me next week and follow me wherever you follow people. Have a great day.